Mr. Co-President Nigel Farage, Freedom and Democracy. Honour, we have all the presidents of the European Union ahead of us, telling us that everything's okay. Heads in the sand, carry on, chaps, all is fine. Well, sorry, it won't wash. The euro is living on borrowed time, it's living on borrowed money, and this second Greek bailout just prolongs the agony. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at it, how many bonds the Chinese buy, whatever deal President Sarkozy does with the French banks to change repayment debts, dates, the fact is that Greece is going bust. She can't even afford her current repayments, let alone be forced by you to taking on a whole load more debt. This chorus of unanimity from EU leaders and the increasingly appalling IMF is just reinforcing failure and it's raising bigger questions about the whole European project. There's been a growing loss of faith in you guys, in these institutions, because of your political dishonesty. The way that you forced through the Lisbon Treaty, your appointment as the President of Europe, all of it done without referring to people at all. But now there's a bigger question. The peoples of Europe don't just think you're dishonest, they now think that you're incompetent. It's bad enough to have your democracy taken from you, but to have your lives now run by people who are taking us towards the economic rocks is far, far worse. You run around like headless chickens, lurching from one bailout to the next, never inspiring confidence, never giving any leadership. Every single prediction you make at these meetings is proved to be wrong. You are now look, looked at as the Brussels bunglers. And your complete refusal to accept a contingency plan, to accept a plan B of any kind at all, as millions lose their job and their lives sink increasingly into poverty, frankly is nothing less than a dereliction of duty. You are not fit for purpose. And this chamber may be empty today because MEPs, frankly, don't really care. But as we speak, there are hundreds of thousands gathering in Athens and other big Greek cities. If they reject your bullying demands, if they say no to this package and there is a default, well, it will be painful for the banks. It will be painful for the ECB, but better surely to face up to our responsibilities now. I wonder, do you have a plan in place for that? And if they accept your bullying demands, well, don't think that the Arab Spring cannot turn into a Mediterranean summer of discontent as people fight to get their democratic rights back. I know which option I would prefer. Uh, thank you. Those that try to now flag a possible plan B that will be, in fact, uh, more easy or uh, um, a possible alternative, they are simply lying. There is no plan B to avoid default. The only plan there is is the plan that is put forward now by the European Commission, by the European Central Bank and by the IMF, and that is fully supported too by all the member states of the euro area. And anyone who is suggesting that there is another alternative will be responsible for a, a real catastrophe for the public finances in Greece. This is the plan we have. And when we have a plan, of course, commentators can always speculate, but usually I leave speculation for speculators. We are not here to speculate. We are here to take actions. And we have defined a plan, we have to stick to it. This is the plan that we have for dealing with the situation in Greece. And any idea to create alternatives, to be all the time putting in question, will not reinforce the confidence of Greece itself in the plan and the confidence of the European Union and overall confidence of the markets. So our message, if we really want to help, is let's stick to the plan agreed. <laughs> Thank you.